Very good evening to you and greetings from Tony Hurl at St Paul's Vicarage in St Albans and it's uh, night prayer on Saturday the 6th of June and it's St Paul's at home. And we'll look at the song Set a Fire and look at more of the gifts of the Spirit in this Pentecost week where uh, we looked a bit at the Pentecost sermon and now at the gifts of the Spirit and then the fruits of the Spirit. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's give God a moment to speak to us about anything that he wants to bring up, so the meditations of our heart can be pure. So, most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we've sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. So receive forgiveness, but receive the rising of the Holy Spirit within you so that anything that needs to be done to address what's gone wrong, that you have the power of the Spirit and the winsomeness of the Spirit to do it. But also where we haven't done things, we have the energy of the spirit or creativity to do them. So before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams, defend our sight from te fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O oh, Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. I love that thing that God is watching over us all the time. And we live in more uncertain days, having had a period when human beings with money can, can perhaps control their environment. The the bugs now are getting difficult to control and that raises the fact that we need to be in God's presence and not to be robbed of anything by the evil one. And that's a spiritual health as well as physical health and emotional health. And for us, God wants us to grow healthy. Will Reagan set a fire. I think we've done it before, but so set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control because I want more of you, God. More of you, God. Human development is marked by increasing independence. Spiritual development is marked by increasing dependence. So that we're able to put boundaries around the world and need to, but have no boundaries for God. Total dependence. So that he, we are have his passionate heart working through us and have all the emotions then that God wants to work through us. And Lydia quite often gets tears for others as she prays for them. And she's not feeling particularly sad, but it's as though God is... Well, someone once said to her, you're praying the tears I can't pray. And so we're vehicles for God's expression. We're his body, individually and corporately, to feel the pain he feels and to pray with groans that are perhaps too deep to utter, it says in Romans 8. So as we continue on in the gifts... Now, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. They're not for us. They're not badges. They're tools for the job to build up the church so it can do the works or to do the works. To one, there is given through the, mess the Spirit. We did wisdom and knowledge yesterday. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. Now, these are obviously in a sense, the more obvious, miraculous powers. Faith, just the ability to believe. And Jesus said, you know, if you've got faith, you can say to this mountain, lift up and be cast into the sea. And I'm, 
I've got so much further to go on all these. But I suppose as I look back, when I was in a very difficult situation in the previous uh, role, um, I was told that God was over it and I wasn't to worry, and I struggled with the gift of faith to receive that. I was very grateful for it. It was a lifesaver at the time. Um, but I think I still did worry. I didn't give the burden to Christ. I didn't have faith, which is obviously without understanding how. Um, so it's a bit like when Moses had the Egyptians behind and was standing on the bank and uh, the children of Israel were, wondering, were in fear. God said, don't worry, I have a way for you. And he could just say, yes, that's fine. I accept that. That's the gift of faith. That's believing. That's trust in an extremely difficult situation. I look back at the building project here and, you know, it was a huge sum of money and lots of people were saying, you know, it can't be done. Some people were saying it wouldn't you know, be right to spend it on ourselves, not that it was ever for ourselves. But I suppose there I look back and I think I just had the gift of faith because I think it was extraordinary what happened. But at the time, it didn't feel a miraculous gift. It just felt that it was right. And I just felt, you know, over those 10 years, it was right. And so you took all the bounces and things, and many of those, although they may have been wrapped in a bad message, actually were helpful. Um, but God was in it. And I look back and I think, yes, that was one instance when I think I just had the gift of faith for a situation. Um, healing and miracles are obviously very closely linked. And as you know, if you know me well, the uh, Romans 15 passage about that being intrinsic to the gospel, about the gospel is fully preached, the gospel is by word and deed with signs and wonders. So the deeds aren't just human niceness, they are signs and wonders. And uh, it says in Africa, Asia and Latin America, 80 to 90 percent of those who become Christians from non-Christian backgrounds, it's because they've experienced God's healing or they've had a close person they know who's experienced a healing. So these are amazing gifts of the Spirit, both to set people well, and Jesus' ministry was full of healing, and it sort of was a bit ambiguous in a way, what was physical healing and what was whole body healing, because so so covers the whole thing and the leper who came back and was thankful was the one who was so so he was saved so he got physical healing with the appropriate if you like emotional spiritual healing too some of the others just got physical healing but mostly they went together and and often oh, there are certainly invitations for the whole caboodle as it were the whole lot so gifts of healing are i think rare in England, because I think we have a don't have a very strong faith culture here, sadly. Um, but they are gifts of the Spirit. They're biblical. Jesus' ministry, a lot of it was about healing and dealing with evil spirits. And therefore, if we were in the same, obviously only certain bits of his ministry were recorded. But it's about, isn't it, a third of the Gospels is devoted to healing and and there are many little verses which do a lot of it, like everyone who came to him was healed in Matthew. Um, so there are many, uh, there's much further to go on this. God has more for us. And may we appropriate that and may we live in the light of that and not be pygmy Christians in terms of gifting. So let's pray for our world and for us. Father, we, pray, we know that the church is to be your body and it is to be light and salt and that the gifts of the spirit are the tools to enable us to do the job and we confess before you that as a church we have failed to be salt and light to our community and we look as these gifts of the spirit and realize they're not as common in our experience as they should be so grant us grace to grow in the gifts of the spirit using the tools for the common good, for building up either the body or for evangelism or for changing uh, structures in society, for justice, for kingdom come, your work, your rule being extended. And we pray for the focus to come from our natural talents and us being seen as nice people to being obviously it's your gifts and us being seen as God's people and you get the glory.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we know many need healing. Many need miracles to save them. Many situations of change need faith. We thank you for the Wilberforce who believed you for the freedom from oppression of slavery and carried on through his whole life's work to bring that to fruition. We thank you for his gift of faith in the area of social care. We thank you for others with the gift of faith who've pioneered ministries, be they healing or missionaries. Thank you for Hudson Taylor's gift of faith to trust you for money and to trust you so that he went as a Chinese man to China in the sense that he dressed as a Chinese man. Thank you for his gift of faith. And Father, we pray for those who have one gift in large quantity for them to have the others too. So we pray that we may have faith not just for money, but also for healing, also for changing the structures, also for individuals who are lost. So Father, grant to us an infilling of your Holy Spirit and an outworking of that in the midst of this world for your glory. And we pray for our world and those who are struggling to know your power, liberate them, bring them wholeness. We pray for people to become Christians. We pray for structures to align to your kingdom. We pray for us to make progress towards that goal of a multiracial society. Thank you, heaven's going to be a multiracial city. We pray for the uniting of the races and all across the board, the intergenerations. We pray for the turning of sons to the fathers and fathers to the sons, the healing between the generations. In Jesus' name, amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you've redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as an apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. The collect for today, or special prayer. O Lord, from whom all good things come. Grant to us your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And so may the spirit of truth lead you into all truth. May the spirit of healing lead us to be agents of his power. And may the spirit of love enable all to be done in love and give us grace to confess that Jesus is Lord and strengthen us to proclaim the word and the works of God, words and deeds with signs and wonders and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.